and welcome to Aditya Birla Sun Life AMC Limited Q4 FY22 Earnings Conference Call. We have with us today from the management, Mr. A. Bala Subramanian, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Param Joglekar, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Prakash Bhogle, Head Investor Relations. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star 10 zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. A. Bala Subramanian for his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, operator. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, good evening to everyone uh, for attending this investors call. I hope you all had the opportunity to go through the earnings presentation, which is available on the stock exchange as well as on our website. Let me first begin with the economic outlook and mutual fund update. Um, FI 2022, as you all know, turned out to be a mirror image of last year with the growth rebounding from 2020, pandemic lows. And world over policymakers have been adopting policies that support uh, growth, but with the rising prices, we expect to see some kind of tightening of policies then. The geopolitical factor and the developments is also now determining the global supply chain and commodity prices in general, leading to an inflation. And inflation in India too, much like the rest of the world, has been on a rise, but has largely remained within the RBI tolerance band. Higher inflation has been due to high commodity prices and global supply disruptions due to geopolitical crisis. So far, we have seen an accommodative stance with the RBI on account of higher preferences for growth. But with increasing pressure due to higher prices, we may see a change in preference from growth to inflation. And high inflation, hockey's RBI, a sharp increase in bond yields in developed markets, and large borrowing program have caused interest rates in India to rise moderately. And also the exports and imports both jumped sharply in FA22, as is known, because of high oil prices. Demand for gold and strong global growth supported both imports and exports. As a result of that, India's state deficit rose from $103 billion in FI2021 to almost $200 billion in FI2022. And the current account deficit, as a result of that, also widened to 1.5% from 0.9%. And going forward, oil prices, in our own belief, is, will be the most important variable for the new economy, has the same impact on India's GDP growth, inflation, as well as the balance of payment dynamics. In terms of impact on economic growth, given that duration and the impact of the geopolitical conflict is highly unpredictable, we can see downside risk in India's growth forecast in FA2023 is a negative shock that does not get extended beyond the point. On the market front, the valuations are corrected, but remain close to long-term average. The heightened geopolitical conflict has also led to elevated FI outflow from India, but the same has been offset by strong Domestic institutional uh, buying was the same period, which is supporting the market. For the next few years, India is likely to go back to its real GDP growth of the pre-pandemic levels with all these three drivers of economy, namely consumption and investment and exports of firing. Therefore, I would remain optimistic as India is uh, coming back then maybe in the year 2022 and beyond, and therefore attracting more, more foreign flows from into India, as well as the Indian mutual industry will continue to grow on the higher part. With respect to the mutual industry, uh, during the quarter, the quarterly average assets and management for the Indian mutual industry had an all-time high of 30.30 lakh crores as of March 2031-2022, as against 30.19 lakh crore as of December 31-2022. We, in, in, in a sense, overall we saw a flat market in the last quarter of the current financial year. It again, on a year-on-year basis, grew over 20 percent from 30 lakh crores of March 2021 to uh, March 2022, about 38 lakh crores. In FI 2022, the mutual industry witnessed good inflows across various equity schemes. A significant proportion of these inflows have been contributed through the launch of new schemes by various mutual funds across different categories. In fact, the total money rise to the NFOs is to the extent of about 1.08 lakh crores. The retail participation from both the T30 and B30 have remained strong during this period. 
as on 31st of march 2022 the total number of mutual fund investors stood at 13.1 crore versus 9.9 crores on or as of march 31st of 2022 is an increase of about 33% on a year on year basis as the continuous promotion of sips has created a significant momentum in the monthly sip contribution in fact overall monthly sip book has hit a record high of over 12400 crores in march 2022 Industry witnessed a strong net equity sales of 90,000 crores in the Q4 of FA 2022 through a mix of new fund offerings as well as existing funds receiving flows. This trend has consistently played out over the past few months. Within the existing equity schemes and hybrid categories and flexi-cap categories in multi-cap and sectoral funds and dynamic asset allocations, these are the schemes generally we have seen net inflows coming into the mutual fund space. The return investor surge is also reflected. in higher industry industrial in uh, in this individual average aem which grew by 21% year on year and contributed 58% total monthly average aem the mutual fund average aem for march 2022 from the 30 cities was 17% of the total aem the sip registration was around 71 lakh in the q4 of 2022 which again gives us the confidence for the future of the growth industry the total number of sip is accounted as on march 31 2022 was around 5.2 crores for the for the industry as a whole coming to the article of like anc performance our total average aem for the quarter ending march 2022 stood at 3.07 lakh crores with the yearly growth of 9% mainly on the back of robust contribution from the equity segment however quarterly average aem uh, quarterly uh, total aem growth has been as seen a dip due to marginal year and outflows in some of our season come up and Our equity mutual fund AEM grew by 25% on a year on year to 1.1 lakh crores for the quarter ending March 2022. Our equity mix as it stands today is about 41% of total assets and management is coming from equity. As is stated, the customer acquisition remains an integral part of our strategy. We added around 13 lakh new folios in the whole year of February 2022, and with this, our total folio overall folio. Has increased to 79 lakhs, almost touching 80 lakh uh, folios uh, as it stands today. Our equity performance, which is again key integral part of our success of AMC, has seen a significant turnaround across all categories. In fact, our dynamic asset allocation fund, sectoral and thematic fund category, we have seen AEM growth through net inflows driven by strong performance. To better serve our investors and give them the best investment experience, we have made few structural changes to the investment team. On the equity side, with the two co-heads managing and mentoring team of analysts and fund managers, which we believe will bring in high level of um, contribution, accountability, as well as the responsibility in terms of driving our not only the investment performance, even the connection to the external level world. And recently, we held our ninth edition of our flagship investment conclave voyage. In fact, we have been doing this for since the time since the last nine years. We generally is where the people look look up to look look forward to this. We do not have a signature event. We had received a very good response on this the event, which happened the last month. The event had eminent speakers from all around the world with diverse backgrounds and experiences to share the knowledge. Our investment management team provided great insight into the economy, markets, and what strategy one must follow for a good investment experience as part of our value addition to both our investors as well as distribution partners. As part of our scale initiatives, we are we are constantly working towards leveraging the potential of our existing products as well as launching new product bill size. Over the last few years, our focus has been growing our retail franchise, increasing the wallet share from B to C cities, and building our SAP book size. As part of this continuous drive, we implemented various initiatives, and they are as follows: We have seen significant traction from our Harker SAP. That's why we started our campaign to drive our SAP. Along with our existing win with SAP as a campaign, we are also creating awareness about the multiple SAP, rather multi SAP I can call it, feature that uses the power of investing in multiple schemes, as well as acts as an effective tool for goal based investing. Through these efforts, our monthly SAP book has increased from 794 crores as of March 2021 to 894 crores, just short of 5 crores to 900 crores in March 2022. We have registered around 3.24 lakh new SAPs. During the quarter ending March 2022, as a result, we now have about 30 lakh live SAPs, which is as on March 2022. We 
to our uh, VR model, which is nothing but virtual R model. We have activated around 2,500 distributors across the country. In fact, our uh, virtual R model today are currently available to activate uh, ISAs in our 14 languages in about 16 touch points that we have built across the country uh, as part of our expansion drive in activating more IFAs to work for us. With our service to sales model, which again we introduced one of the new initiatives in the beginning of the year, we are focusing on building the right skill set of our client relation executives to engage effective with investors and facilitate their investment decisions. Currently, we are around 100 dedicated, dedicated personnel under this model to guide investors and address their uh, every need in order to get our service relationship with the customers increase significantly and therefore increase our mind share, which ultimately will lead to increase the market share. Our distribution expansion initiative, which is called the Sampark, has empowered over 5,000 distributors in the current year, especially the people who have been, of course, getting onboarded to the mutual funds as the and holders. And they are, of course, getting this empowered with us as a special initiative called Single Click Empowerment. We have seen a really good success on that. We are again adding to the overall success of the AMC. Through our investor education initiatives, which has been one of the uh, pioneer uh, divisions that we have created, we also set up various programs for the bottom of the MFDs fraternity, which again remains a continuous ongoing process for us to reach out to more on customers, one creating awareness, as well as increasing the mind share and the market share. We also have to share that our efforts have worked out very well with the contribution of retail franchisee, increasing to 48% as on March 2022, compared to 43% about five years ago. Similarly, the contribution from B30 markets, which used to be about 14% five years ago, Today is about stands about 16% as of March 2022. In order to increase the retail sales contribution further and bring in a sharper focus on a high potential market, this year we have divided the country into five zones. A special focus has been given to Mumbai and Delhi, which generally we call it the T2 in our uh, system as a separate zone. As these markets combined, com co uh, both combined put together, contribute to overall about 40% of the overall retail market. Therefore, we have brought in a special emphasis and special focus in order to have a sharper engagement in Mumbai and Delhi, and therefore call the zone. And the rest of them actually is divided into four zones, which again continues from a retail franchisee uh, penetration point of view. We also created in order to serve the large pool of growing HNI. We have a separate team of uh, people to focus on this segment, and have been introducing specialized products and services under the brand name of Care to cater this segment of the market. Therefore, our sales team actually is actually made to uh, work around these the new model and structures in order to increase them, reward them, recognize the top talent, while also creating a collaborative spirit among the team for higher engagement and synergy, and therefore can lead to an increase in overall productivity in the coming year. With respect to alternate assets, which again I've been guiding uh, everyone that this is one of the key areas of focus I will bring in, I'm happy to inform you that our passive product has been leading a good result. In fact, our overall passive as a category has gone up a six time from March 2021 to March 2022 to touch almost about 10,000 crores, just short of about uh, 38 crores with respect to us, uh, size over 9,916 crores is the size that we have reached as of March 2022. Our emphasis on building our passive strategy also has gained momentum by way of launch of more products through ETF, fund of funds, and multiple index funds. Our customer base in this category has also now grown to about 398,000 folios, which again reflects on the approach that we are bringing in in order to take the ETF as one of the products as alternate investment solution to the customers. It's also not beginning to yield as a result. Currently, our passive offering can be backed into four categories, oriented towards the fixed income, equity, hybrid, and commodities. After gaining significant traction and scale, we plan to launch smart beta passive products which are comparatively higher margin and can contribute to overall profitability as we move forward. As far as the offshore fund concerns, last time we did make a mention that we were making some changes. In fact, since the time, the gentleman in Sarat Satkumara was a seasoned global emerging market money manager as our international CIO. We have been engaging with various funds, both in uh, Singapore and other markets, to launch our fund called the Greater India Year's Engagement Fund. We already launched this uh, fund in terms of our roadshows, and hopefully this should also now see some kind of success in the coming quarters as part of our contribution coming from the global market. On the PMS and AIA front, first and foremost, we have a suit of products like service sector leaders, leaders AIF, 
and market link to Bengal PMS and credit opportunities fund in our pipeline. While we continue to do that, even existing PMS, we have made some uh, new changes in our team in order to drive the PMS as an asset class as for next level of growth. I mean, once the current uh, recruitment and delivery ban only is on board, and we will bring in some kind of aggression on the PMS front as we move forward in terms of launching new products, as well as products that could be profitable for us as well as suitable for the customers. On the real estate front, I'm happy to share that we have completed our first close on Altimula Sun Life Real Estate Credit Opportunities Fund. And in fact, uh, we, we, we closed the fund at about 160 or 170 crores in terms of size. And hopefully this fund will be uh, going actually being taken to the overseas market. In fact, in the coming year, 2022-2023, we'll bring in more assets in the same fund as you move forward. Now moving to the financials for the quarter. Our focus continues to remain achieving a robust asset mix of high-margin equity assets and long-term debt. We would like to reiterate that our equity mix is an all-time high of 41% for the quarter uh, or for the quarter ending March 2022. ABS and AMC, in fact, registered highest level of profit in FIA 2022. During the financial year 2022, the total revenue has improved from improved by 17% on a year-on-year -year from 1,200 crores to 1,409 crores. Our profit after tax has increased by 28% year-on-year from 523 crores to 670 crores in the FI 2022. And we are happy to announce that the board has also proposed 5.85 rupees dividend as the final dividend for FI 2022. With this, the total dividend declared for the full year about 11.45 per share. For FI 2022, our overall investment book stood at 2,121 crores. And in fact, uh, the year of 2022 has gone quite well both in terms of having the right asset mix, highest ever uh, profitability, overall improved asset mix, and reasonably good momentum that we have built in the last uh, few quarters in building our SAPs. All of them actually are going in the right direction in terms of building our business next level. Well, with this, I would like to just conclude my, uh, my briefing and now open the floor for any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please press star and one at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Prayesh Jain from Mutilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, so just wanted to understand a couple of things. Firstly, Sorry to uh, you. Mr. Jain, may I request you to speak on the handset mode? Your audio is not very clear. Is this better? If you are on speaker, please come on the handset mode and you proceed. Thank you. Hello, is this better? Yes, much clearer. Yeah. Yeah, just wanted to check on one. Uh, so in the fourth quarter, uh, there was a uh, sequential increase in other expenses. So is, was there, was there any one-offs in third quarter uh, which uh, which is uh, now reflected and come has come back? That was one. And second, I would appreciate your thoughts on further trajectory on the yield, uh, basically on the mutual fund business. With regards to you know uh, how are they shaping up, especially if you could throw some light on uh, the movement between the or oh, legacy assets versus the new new assets, uh, uh, that would be pretty helpful. Sure, Sahesh, uh, I'll ask Parak to answer this. Uh, thanks, Parak, for the question. Uh, so on the on the other expense side, uh, so uh, generally our uh, the trajectory is in the range of around fifty. Uh, five odd crores. Uh, so this quarter there is slightly some uh, expenses on uh, the marketing uh, activities we have done on alternate asset and uh, digital side, which has uh, slightly increased uh, our cost on uh, this uh, end. Plus, post uh, the opening of economy and traveling, 
a lot of uh, events uh, and a lot of traveling has been happening, uh, which has uh, uh, slightly increased expenses. Plus, offices uh, are working as normal, uh, which which was not there in earlier quarters, which has taken up uh, expenses slightly up. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, more or less, it will be in the range of around 55 odd crore, which we have seen earlier also. Uh, there is slightly bump up in the current quarter due, due to the quarter year end uh, pressures or year end spendings. Yeah, so, uh, some spend on alternate asset we have done on the marketing side. Okay, so this kind of run rate, uh, 60 crores kind of a contribution rate is sustainable? So that, that is what our uh, hmm. the same yeah, name would be. Yeah, yeah. You know, 50, 55 to around range currently. Okay, got that, got that. And on the yields front, how do you see that yields moving ahead, especially in the light of, uh, you know, movement between legacy assets to newer assets? So uh, yields has a uh, various composition uh, which which impact the overall yield. Uh, one is the size, how it moves up, and uh, which asset class is uh, the contribution increases in the overall mix. That depends, but uh, we, we, we are hopeful that the yields on overall in children, uh, will continue to be in the range of this 41 odd basis here and there, currently which are there. Maybe uh, if the size really goes up, then may see some pressure on equity yields, but uh, uh, we, we are hopeful that debt uh, yields uh, over the period can um, compensate to a certain extent. <coughs> Sorry. And, uh... <coughs> Lastly, if you look at the market share in both equity and debt, we still not seem to be gaining, gaining any ground out there. Um, any thoughts as to what would be the uh, key drivers to improve the market share in both the equity and the debt segments? Yeah. See, with respect to market share, Prayesh, uh, clearly, while we saw um, I think previous years uh, fall in market share, I think one, first and foremost, the way I see is the rate of fall got reduced quite significantly in the last uh, few quarters, last two quarters. That's one. Secondly, we have seen an increase in contribution coming from the banking uh, channel. It's an organized channel which largely sells on the base of the uh, product being part of the approved list and so on and so forth. We have now seen improvement in the overall banking channel uh, contribution, which again I see is a sign of uh, movement. And third is the, um, um, I think the NFO-led growth versus existing uh, fund-led growth. Last year's uh, significant proportion of the uh, flows were coming to the NFOs. That's why I mentioned in my, my briefing about 50% of flows came to the NFOs. I see the coming year reduced uh, offerings of NFOs and therefore money would move gradually the existing funds. We have prepared ourselves in positioning fire for product which are the flagship and respective categories. And, uh, and and whose performance also been uh, quite uh, uh, good. And uh, even the engagement that we have at the ground level that we are doing in order to build a size in the existing funds in the, each of the major categories of funds, that's something that should also help us in improving the overall share. And the last, of course, is the improve the overall uh, SAP book size is close to about 900 crores currently we have. And each month we have been seeing the run rate improving especially on the registration. I think we continue to keep this high focus um, or endeavor to have close to about 1,000 crores plus in SIP would also lead to an improvement in the overall uh, market share improvement. I think that's one single point agenda that we have in order to build that. The team structure I just mentioned about briefly, I think what you have done in terms of retail team structure. In fact, that has been done keeping in mind the sharper focus that you have to bring in those markets which matters to us, high potential, at the same time, the team can work in a very focused manner, improving high productivity in the respective market without diluting their attention in looking at all around the place. That's something, again, we have done it in the team structure. So this sharpness in team structure also should help us in bringing in higher productivity or outcome coming from the uh, each of these uh, markets as we move forward. In fact, I must mention the retail team has made announcements they are quite enthusiastic and energetic uh, as they got the growth and they also feel very confident that that uh, that the coming year uh, we will be able to actually uh, move towards improving the overall productivity. So this, this is an assumption. And the last is of course the fixed income side. I think year-end outflows which normally happens as a result of that you would have probably seen a marginal dip in the fixed income AEM as well, which in my own belief is um, should again come back as we move forward. Given the fact that 
uh, we are a significant player in that market and should also help in overall the size is getting little better okay sir thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of lalit dio from equiris please go ahead yeah yeah good evening sir thank you for the opportunity so so my first question would be sir so so we are we are seeing a strong growth on the etf and index fund now while we understand that the uh, so it's on a current lower base so do we have like any broad mix in the mind like that we are try, uh, targeting to increase like currently it is a, it forms about 2% of the overall amx so do we have any number in the uh, for, for uh, ideal mix for the in the future and with the increase in the etf and index fund do you uh, do we foresee any pressure on the yields as well um the and your first point i think the way currently we are doing it whichever number i put that as a percentage total asset management is still very very small given the fact that we are now want about 9000 crores size within a trilla crore size will still be a small portion of the overall asset management given the fact that uh, we don't have the luxury of getting the government related uh, uh, growth in our uh, in our in our uh, in our schemes at the same time um, the the milestone having now established this base having now got in a high level of focus on building passive as one of the separate strategy in addition to the growing or existing funds active managed funds uh, definitely the rate of growth that you are looking at from this segment would definitely will target higher amount but still will not be still a major component of the am and the only keep rising as we move forward that way i will look at it rather than measuring the success as a percentage of the am but how we actually rate of growth is coming from the segment that that's something which i look at as part of the strategy going forward and at the same time so uh, in terms of keeping the profitability uh, as look for an opportunity in fact we already filed almost about 13 or 14 applications with sebi uh, thanks to um, uh rather uh, the regulatory framework today does not perform permit new funds to be launched at the beginning of april and june period uh, on the pulling up account uh, compliance requirement which industry has following i think once it is done probably once we start getting approval we will launch some other funds which will which is more like uh, either con based funds or maybe smart builder fund which will of course help us in getting a little higher margin also on that as far as the um, the margin pressures due to the rise in index funds I don't see that becoming a, a trend um, at least for next three four years. That's my personal view. Given the fact that as the market breadth gets widened and the probability of money managers delivering return either in line with the index or better than index will always come. And that being the case, uh, I don't see the margin pressures coming on actual managed funds just because of money is actually uh, rather the low cost funds are being offered to the market. And my own belief is the rate of growth for local funds will be probably higher than the rate of growth for active managed funds at least for some time. As part of the whole allocation uh, strategy, under allocation strategy, I think index funds in all fairness should also be part of the consideration for the investors, which I think as the fund house will offer, the fund house also will offer to be fair to the customer. The customer would also have a mix of actual managed funds and index funds. Look at the total cost that he is paying rather than. they moving only towards the low cost funds therefore i don't see margin pressure coming on the basis of index given the fact the size of the fund is still becoming larger uh, these the, the expense also get reduced as per the new semi guidelines is got introduced about few years back therefore i don't see that as a big challenge and the last of course is these direct plan expenses once the size become larger at adjusting for this wing commission direct plan expenses itself is be so attractive the probably them are in need for somebody to look at for reducing for the expense and go and look for index funds and for putting pressure on the actual management expenses sure sir um, and so like uh, as you mentioned like we have 14 to 15 products on the uh, in pipeline for the passive uh, on the passive front so do we have any products in the uh, in the uh, in the active side do we have any products in the pipeline active side we we already have one uh, fund which of course filed with sebi and waiting for approval which is a multi asset allocation uh, fund <clears throat> which of course include uh, commodity as well as part of that and that's something which we already have and once uh, once the approval comes we are actually hoping to get approval uh, in the month of march that we were we thought we will launch in the month of may but uh, given the current situation probably will do it in june july the second quarter of the current financial year 
But in the meantime, uh, it's also an opportunity which I see. Uh, I, I was telling my colleagues as well. And given the fact in April, May, June, NFOs would be less. It's also a good opportunity actually to revive the greater interest on existing funds. It's also equally important for the industry to grow, which also I, I see there's an opportunity actually to create a recall for the existing funds much bigger than what we would have seen in the last year, and therefore improving the contribution of the existing fund itself. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jigne Shail from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you very much for the opportunity, sir. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, and, and pretty much detailed, uh, uh, you know, information you already uh, had given. Just uh, 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 three things. One, uh, can you give us a little bit more details about? Uh, uh, sorry if I missed out, uh, you know, uh, in the opening remarks, uh, but uh, a little bit more broader strategy about how we are planning to do on the alternative side, and uh, how that particular business should see a growth in next. A little relatively a longer horizon, two to three years, and how that will impact our yields. That is one. Uh, second, as you already said, that you know because of the unlocking and all other expenses, somewhere around 55 crores and all. So the package is how uh, the range, what you are seeing it up for next three years, to give a little bit a broader idea on that. And finally, any increase you are seeing it on the dividend payout side, or there will be more distribution coming up uh, on the dividend side. If you can give us some clarity on that. That that would be really helpful. Uh, that that is uh, the three questions I have. Sure. So with respect to your Jignesh uh, uh, on your alternate uh, strategy, sure. um, one we are going to separate vertical as we have informed in the past. Uh, this is comprising of uh, four different segments of the market. One uh, PMS and the AF uh, space. Mm -hmm. Second is the um, uh, second is the uh, passive strategy with an ETF. And mm -hmm. the third is within the passive fund of fund also is got included in that. And third is the real estate uh, fund. And fourth is the offshore. Uh, with mm -hmm. respect to the PMS and AAF, I just mentioned in my opening remark that we are uh, further strengthening our uh, team by way of uh, getting somebody on board whom we have already finalized. And mostly next quarter, I'll want to join, I'll be able to disclose the name. And once he comes on board, we have a big plan in terms of launching both the closed under AAF as well as the open under AAF. Mm -hmm. And also the AAF, which will have a low low cost structure at the same time, uh, at the same time, profit sharing kind of uh, model. Mm -hmm. That's something we'll uh, step up our uh, focus in offering such products to the market. Recently, we of course have a money manager who has joined from Ask Ram and James, Ask, Ask, Ask uh, PMS uh, division. And with this, we are strengthening our team further in order to bring in a higher level of focus on building the size in this. Which ultimately, of course, currently we had a size of 2,000 crores. In fact, the peak AEM that we had in PMS was about 5,000 crores about a few years back. Yeah. yeah. We need to um, uh, go past that number the next uh, next few years with respect to the PMS and increase the contributing coming to the segment. Okay. Second, um, uh, with respect to the um, uh, BTF strategy and passive study, which I just explained earlier, mm -hmm. with respect to the offshore, we have seen a static growth the last few years. I think it, I don't think it can go was than what we are seeing, it can only get better. Even mm. the fact that uh, we already launched a fund which is called uh, Engagement Fund, ESG Engagement Fund, and mm. more uh, such focus that we want to start bringing on the table, including winning mandates from existing customers who have got great experience dealing with us for the last 14 years. Mm. I think that probably will give us an incremental AEM and also see there are opportunities coming from the offshore business, uh, especially in offering product solution to the global investors in the infrastructure space, we have been already having informal engagement uh, with one of the leading firm to help us raise money from pension funds to whom we can offer India-related product, especially with a pension component product, which again mm -hmm. have a higher margin coming on the space, given the fact that we have a large team who understand the credit market much better. That's something mm -hmm. we will do as far as the offshore fund concerns. Them. So, of course, we have a very clear strategy on the alternate uh, piece in taking it to the next level. And as we see a development happening in this space, I think we'll keep announcing it in each quarter in order to give a more clarity on this space. So definitely the intention is to have higher contribution coming on the profitability as well as on the more than AEM, more on the profitability. Sure. With respect to the um, other expenses, uh, Parai, you want to say? Oh, uh, 
So as we, I mentioned earlier that our other expenses uh, uh, will is around 55 or road or in the last year. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, uh, Mr. Shah, but your audio is not very clear. I would request you to come closer to the phone and on the handset mode. Sure. So. Uh, our, our uh, other expenses uh, were in the range of around 55 odd uh, road in the last couple of quarters and uh, we, we are hopeful that uh, it will re remain in that range with some inflation uh, impact uh, going forward which may have and likely maybe post alternate asset business going up there may be some cost uh, on the marketing side of those, uh, those products. May, may come in, but uh, we, we, we are committed to keeping our cost under control as far as possible and keeping it uh, uh, the growth below the growth of uh, the overall uh, growth of the AEM. Uh, so, I, what, what I understand is that there is a very limited probability of now on absolute basis cutting down this particular cost because we are already working on the optimized level. Uh, so, whatever now the, the pack improvement, packing improvements are concerned. It has to come up from the top rather than, uh, you know, a rationalization of excellence is happening. That is, that is what I was coming to. So that, that understanding is correct, right? So more diversity coming up on top, that will basically give us more practical, I mean, improvement on all the profitability. Yeah, cost, cost led focus will be, of course, more, um, say, for example, make an investment today for the future mm -hmm. business. For example, they are building an alternate uh, business, then naturally they will have some of cost. For example, this quarter itself, we have few costs which has come related to the alternate business where we are increasing the cost now, but it will start delivering in terms of both top line and profitability as we move forward. But those are okay. some other things which should be there. Otherwise, what your assumption is right. All right. And last question on dividend? Um, yeah. Coming to the last question on the dividend payout, I think we any week have guided uh, around 50% of our PAT uh, would be kept aside for the purpose of distribution. And and uh, the, though the policy, we are given a broader guidance without without giving any percentage of dividend declaration that we we'll do. Mm -hmm. But you would have already seen in the last two quarters we gave an interim dividend, and we win, and now we are giving the final dividend, which is 40 percent. More or less, uh, that will continue. But as the cash balance becomes larger, and we uh, we we don't feel the need for that, I'm sure the subject to the approval of the board and shareholders. And this percentage can definitely vary. But for at least for, uh, if I uh, put it for the next three years kind of an horizon, we should assume it would be minimum 50% or so somewhere between 50 to 60% kind of assumption would be uh, would be reasonable. Is, is, is my assumption correct? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Just lastly, being sure you, you, you people have been with veteran in the industry uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of interest rate tightening is happening a lot. Uh, do you think uh, the, the demand for debt funds should be relatively muted even going forward? It is near top and liquid uh, will, will see a traction. Obviously, equity and ETF will continue with uh, you know, the, the broader penetration and everything. But what's your view on debt and equity? Do you think that will still remain a bit of a legard at least in near term and liquid will be more into demand? Just your thoughts on it. Yeah. I mean, in fact, um, um, the, even the last two, three months, there has been a more shift towards short tunnel assets or short, short duration fixed income schemes, uh, mm -hmm. which again, my, our, our own belief will continue for some time till we actually see the rate hike starts happening. I think once this rate mm -hmm. hike cycle begins, mm -hmm. and um, I think mean, once we reach certain level, uh, probably we'll be able to figure out some opportunities coming on account of uh, uh, in the fixed income space mm -hmm. itself, given the fact. Bond is already discounting mm. uh, 85 to 100 basis points rate hike. Yeah. And right. the way is already discounting the rate hike, whereas the real rate hike has not happened. But mm. as the rate hike happens in the real world, mm. and the bond market already discounts the potential rate hike, mm. now probably a time will come the next, uh, say, maybe the uh, third quarter or fourth quarter of this current financial year, yes. when the 10 year bond yield is close to about 7.5%. We will see an opportunity coming for investors to come in. At the same time, um, even the credit fund, as the credit starts picking up, and as the spread starts widening, we will also see a review of credit funds as we move forward. May or may not happen the year 2020-2023, but maybe in the first second year as the spread starts widening. Therefore, the second come, we probably should start counting for a better recovery going forward in the next uh, six months to one year period. 
and for that during that interim period you may probably see a mutual response coming towards the income uh, staying mm-hmm. rested between uh, between the three months to uh, one year kind of duration this is really helpful sir thanks a lot and all the best yeah, thanks Dinesh thank you the next question is from the line of Dipanjan Ghosh from Kotak please go ahead uh, hi uh, good evening thanks for the opportunity just two or three questions from my side uh, first you know going back to one of the previous questions on the passive strategy and some of the smart beta products that you intend to launch uh, what will be the yield on some of these products uh, if you can uh, you can comment on that uh, second is uh, in your overall cross uh, active equity flows for the year uh, if you can you segregate that between uh, those that came into the direct channel and uh, through the uh, non direct channel uh, for for the overall year or for the quarter uh, and the third is uh, you have mentioned that uh, the overall increase in folios for fy 2022 was around uh, broadly around a million uh, if you can also you know kind of break that as to what will be the overall increase in the number of uh, new pan accounts that would have been registered the increase and that's all from my side yeah. See, with respect to the first question on passive versus smart beta ETF in terms of margin, um, I think smart beta ETF, I think we are looking at at the gross level, anywhere around 60 to 80 basis points kind of the gross level. And the net level, uh, we are looking at contribution somewhere around 35 to 40 basis points as a smart beta ETF. I'll just give an example. The really last year, uh, Nifty 50 equal weight index uh, since it involves a frequent revisiting of the portfolio allocations etc we actually launched this product with the 1% expenses maximum and the distributing commission also we kept in that and then it's contributing close to about uh, 40 basis points net to us that will be build the model and smart beta eta will probably have a similar kind of model though at this point of time um, the, the entire passive is coming out of uh, relatively uh, 10 to 12 basis points kind of uh, product and if it income product which which also comes in the passive category we have been launching a target return index fund and pegging comes phase also i have been giving close to about 20 basis point the gross level that's something again we continue to do maybe the volume will continue to drive our profitability from there rather than absolute uh, margin and that something is the broad expectation that we are building in our business plan with respect to the equity flows let me just get the uh, we don't have generally we disclose the, the number but i can only say broadly Uh, this year we have seen net inflows uh, in our equity schemes through the launch of uh, two fund uh, two open ended equity funds even our existing funds uh, predominantly in the existing funds like sun life equity and uh, some of our uh, uh, some of our um, uh, thematic funds we have seen inflows such as digital india fund banking franchise is fund uh, even the uh, gen x or the consumption consumption oriented fund generally we have seen an inflows in space But this breakup, uh, the pension, uh, I would get that separately. With respect to the folio, folio increase, of course, I mentioned about 13, 13 lakh folio that we got added. And in terms of new PAN number, if I'm not wrong, it's close to about 6 lakh, right? 10 lakh uh, PAN number. Around 10 lakh new PAN number we added. Uh, sure, sure. Thank you. Just, just, just going back to the second question, I think I was more of looking, uh, you know, not at the net info number for the year. but rather trying to understand how much proportion of the gross flows came into the uh, direct channel if you can you know give some color on that yeah, direct channel is about 18 18% okay. direct channel is about 18% um, in the overall asset mix this will be on a un basis right uh, i could be am basis yeah correct okay. uh, can you can you also give this number on a flow basis so flow is overall is in the similar range Okay. Okay. Sure. 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 Thank you. Uh, and all the 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 best. Yeah. Thank you. you. next question is from from line of of Madhukar Lada Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Uh, audible, but I would request you to come on the handset mode and come closer to the phone, please. Yeah, I'm on the handset. Uh, uh, yeah, so my question is... Uh, you know the staff expenses uh, again in q4 we've seen a little bit of a decline uh, from what was trending earlier 
uh, what is playing out of here and uh, how do we see this line item going forward? Yeah, so, Madhukar, uh, on the staff expenses, uh, uh, basically there is slightly two down of the, uh, the VPA provision, which has resulted in slight uh, lower uh, cost on the uh, in the Q3, Q4. So I, I did not understand that. Can you uh, can you just repeat that? So there is a slightly drop in the variable, the bonus provision which we make every okay. quarter. Understood. Because Understood. Slightly drop in the overall cost for the Q4. And uh, can you give what is your total variable pay uh, for the year? Uh, so we we don't disclose that number. It is part, part sure. of the overall cost. Yeah, it is motor assumption only we have to make uh, uh, Madhuka, which is predominantly fixed versus variable. The variable payout generally is about roughly about 20 22 percent of the. 25, 25, 25. Uh, yeah, 20 25 percent of the broad the uh, kitty of the salary. Understood. Got it, sir. Yeah. This is very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhuvanesh Kak from Investec Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, so, sir, I would like to know your views on the points of differentiation for an AMC. Like, like, what are the factors uh, that you think would drive a channel partner to sell ABSL fund particularly, or 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 for the customer to demand ABSL fund? And what the, and in that scenario, what the company is doing about it, and what kind of results you are expecting of your uh, actions in coming year? Yeah, that's my question. Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Puneshkar, for this question. Uh, see, the, the clear differentiation is, I think one is the uh, long years of commitment, the track record that we have as a fund house have brought to the table, and second is as a thought leader in the mutual fund industry to drive in the forefront, not just working only for our fund, even for the whole industry, has given us a high um, a, a high respect as well as high engagement ground level. That's, that's the first and foremost thing which I would say. Second, of course, having created a good experience, see every fund house go through some bit of ups and downs here and there. Having the delivering consistent experience to the customers, not just only in investment performance, even otherwise in adding value to the distributors across the country and uh, staying uh, relevant from the customer point of view in the respective product category, as well as, solu as one of the best solutions provided for the, for the investors. That remains the, the, the second point. Third, with respect to the distribution uh, partners, I think the number of engagement activities that we have around the year, three, six, five days, uh, both in terms of increasing the skill set of the people, as well as working with them closely in adding more customers in every market as part of our penetration, even the fact that uh, we have gone today, I've got a percent of motivated location uh, that can continues to remain one of the big area of focus in increasing our geography footprint. All of them are part of our broad commitment that we have in building this uh, business uh, and serving more uh, growing needs of the customers and distribution community. I think these are some of the things will remain. As another day, we as a fund house, a firm believer of high engagement, high recall for our um, uh, people, product, brand. And 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 the the service that we are able to provide on an ongoing basis that ultimately will increase the market share. I think that, that, that that's something which I've realized over a period of time. High engagement ground level is actually the master in in providing service to the both the distribution community as well as the customers, which will be one of the big differentiator products, which I call it as a hard work. That hard work will have to continue to put more and more each year, passing year in order to ensure that we as a fund get our deserving market share. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, just a yeah. follow-up question uh, uh, on that only. So, uh, do we have any metric to track uh, which track the engagement level? Like, uh, uh, for example, in daily active user in case of apps, so that time spent by each user on app daily basis. So, some kind of metric which which we can track to gauge the uh, change in engagement uh, that we just mentioned. Sure. See, we have introduced um, on the lines of Salesforce.com, which I think internationally most of the most of the companies use this. And we have introduced one of the local uh, 
for local uh, saw tool uh, locally created tool that we have introduced uh, called vimo is again being used by uh, some of the large banks in the country in order to provide a greater uh, facility to the rms in order to be not making more informed and then making more productive in every market in which we operate that something we as a fund was introduced last year in fact uh, wherever i travel and talk to my sales people they all love it because it gives them the 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 greater information that they need uh, on a day to day basis to be prepared uh, in the respective market and then know where is the gap that lies which distributor need to be connected which distributor last time they connected where they where they, they need to connect 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 more in going forward all such information is provided in the in the palm itself through the mobile phone that's something in my, my own belief is helping them in increase engagement on the ground level in order to also um, give them more about mis in a in a in a in a tip of their uh, hand and they're also helping them know the gap that exists in every market in terms of our activities and also helping them plan much better than uh, the past which in my own belief is uh, continuous drive towards this and creating a cultural habit creating a, a habit of using these uh, Uh, as part of uh, normal activities, and that something will help us in bringing higher productivity from every arm that operates in the country. Basically, the idea is make every arm look inward rather than look outward, and and, and therefore he is only worry about his market, his location, which is present, and therefore drive the respective market growth, which we have been done, which we have done historically in the past very well, but maybe for a brief period, yes, we had seen some slippage, which I see is coming back with this introduction of new tool. Great, sir. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Pranav Tendulkar from Rare Enterprises. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Sir, uh, if I calculate, uh, just wanted to confirm this. So, out in outstanding SIPs, our share is around 2.57, and in the new SIPs, it's 4.57 percent. Is that right? Uh, now, what is your question again? So, so in the outstanding SIPs that we have, so I, I think we have 31 lakh, 31.7 lakh. uh sips outstanding and uh, uh, in that we have 2.5% market share out of total uh, sips outstanding in the market and in the new sips we have 4.5 market share 4.5% is that right because new sips we have around i think 324000 as compared to say 7 uh, million in the industry so is that right is that calculation I will ask Prakash to answer this. Sir, Pranav, this uh, 5.28 crores is the industry number, and we have around 31 lakh. So you can work on the market share. Correct, correct. And in the in the same way, I can compare the new SIPs also, right? In the new registration data, we get it on the AMP also. So from there also, you can get the market share correct. of the new registration. Correct. So you have included that in your presentation, sir. Sir, so. Yeah. So, so in fact, in, so that that actually concludes that your market share in the new SIPs is much higher as compared to your previous uh, performance. Is that right? Yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. 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 In every segment we operate, we go and look at what we need to do. If you have to drive our team with high speed up, not the most, uh, and and also increase them actually to sell more SAP is a long-term sustainable nature. That's something we keep doing it. I think what you said is exactly on the same line, same line which we have been building. Right, right. So also, out of our AUM, how much of our AUM stands in first two quartiles? Can we uh, give us a, 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 a color in that? And do we track this number? Yeah, yeah. see, I can give you uh, though we don't generally disclose it, but I can give you motor motor how does it work. Right. Uh, see, in the see most of the funds, um, in fact, uh, in the equity space, almost seventy percent of the funds in the equity space have delivered Q1 Q2 performance uh, with respect to the comparable uh, comparable schemes in the respective categories. In the case of fixed income, 100% of the funds have been the Q1, uh, Q2. 
uh, the way we do is each category we look at peer uh, group and respective categories and then we map it. Therefore, the one year basis will be about 70% roughly, and a two year basis will be roughly about 68%, and a three year basis also will be now close to about 68%. And we have seen a continuous improvement the last one and a half years in all our equity funds performance. Uh, again, um, as, as, as we have seen many times the circle in the market, cycle in the market, and this, this last one and a half years, our improvement significantly that we have shown in the short term performance also now start reflecting on the long term performance. At the same time, of course, if I am better, better than others, somebody else has slipped right. There are many people actually also done extremely well on the basis of their performance during the period of 1920. They have seen a significant dip in their performance as well. So I think that something which goes in a cycle. But, but as a fund house, we want to focus more on consistency rather than the, uh, the, the, the performance either in the short term or in the medium term. Right, sir. So also, can you just give me some color on beyond 30 uh, monthly average AUM? Uh, I think we have around 460 billion on this quarter. Uh, how much of this is equity and uh, debt, like color, if you can give? Is this uh, beyond 30 equity focused market? It's 75% equity. Okay. It's perfect, sir. I have some questions, but I'll come back in the queue. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Prayesh Jain from Motilal Aswal. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Again, thanks for the questions again. Just wanted to check on a slightly longer term outlook for overall equity yield. So we, and uh, you know, uh, Resultantly, overall MS yield. So we have seen uh, in the last couple of years between FI 20, 21, 22, a sharp fall in the yield. Uh, but there have been multiple reasons for it. Uh, but do you see the intensity of this reduction in equity yield to reduce going ahead? And how do we see the yield moving ahead, especially in the equity category? Hello. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, Prish, uh, as uh, you also know, uh, the larger the size will be, the lower the TER. So, and a uh, little bit uh, the new uh, new uh, flows which come uh, uh, in in the scheme the currently may come at a sl slightly higher uh, higher expenses and the rating cost compared to the stock. But it uh, totally depends on which uh, which scheme it comes, which uh, category it comes, because some of some of our uh, our uh, the brokerage after a certain period uh, keep on dropping uh, as as the year passes. Like the first year, maybe NFO expenses, NFO has the initial uh, higher cost of uh, underwriting, but over the period it will keep on dropping, and which will help us all in in reducing uh, the cost of underwriting and improving the yield. So it's difficult to project, but uh, the, the, the principle remains same that sharing will be in the range of around 60 odd percent, and uh, we will we will keep on uh, how the the market or the size goes up. It will have a slightly drop in the TER. Okay, but thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pranav Tendulkar from Rare Enterprises. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks a lot uh, for the opportunity again. Sir, uh, one of the things that is a part of customer experience is obviously uh, return, but that's not the end of it. So uh, I would just like you to spend some time on the factors other than the return of customer experience that you are focusing on or are tracking. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Pranav. Uh, and of course, the, the, way, we, the way even I position is uh, being an asset management company, investment is at the heart of the uh, business. And uh, that goes without uh, saying. And um, uh, and also the risk management that as a fund house, as we start building size, uh, managing business with high governance standards, and also the, uh, the 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 risk that we need to keep in mind, associated with both 
the delivery and consistency and the performance and portfolio respond up to you, as well as giving the operational benefit that you have to give. I think the other area is actually the, the one thing that we keep doing is the constant communication engagement with the existing customers as well on a quarter on quarter basis and adding value to them one on the basis of various opportunities that one could see in the market more as part of the learning initiatives and the university education initiative as you mentioned about is one of the highest we are the number one fund in the country uh, uh, is again ranked as the best among all the mutual fund players in the country that's something we have now brought in a high emphasis last seven eight years second is the uh, on the service initiatives uh, we have a uh, we have a project we have a team called uh, 12 by 12 project we call it uh, within uh, within a few hours of any query that come from the customers need to get resolved uh, within a matter of uh, 12 hours and that's the mandate has been giving to the uh, giving to the entire customer service team as part of the speed to the market initiatives there are many such small initiatives in our own belief is uh, will help us in differentiating ourselves as a fund house who could be uh, who could have a higher mindset of the customers in addition to the experience that they get on putting the money in the investment at the other we believe in adding value to the customers even making the customers aware about the value ordered product that we have we have value ordered services we have but most of the services are meant for creating ease of doing business for the customers but many times investors don't use these value ordered services value ordered product to find a solution or maybe ease of transaction for their uh, for their needs that something create an awareness about them and make customers utility value go up significantly on this exercise is something remains one of the core area of focus in addition to focus only on the investment led growth thank you we lost the uh, it answers your questions now uh, and so we lost his line unfortunately sure sure thank you as there are no further questions from the participants i now hand the conference over to mr a bala subramanian md and ceo for closing comments yeah uh, thank you thank you very much and ladies and gentlemen for um, for logging in today and with this we conclude our uh, p4 fi 22 earnings call do feel free to reach out to us um, uh, through uh, our ir head mr prakash bogle for any queries that you may have and I look forward to seeing you uh, soon thank you thank you on behalf of aditya birla sun life amc limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines